God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Man, I love that. <laughs> Man. I just wanted to read that because that speaks to our identity so strongly. And, um, you know, that's something that I believe that we need to meditate on a lot is the fact that we are now sons. We are joint heir with Christ and we need to walk in this sonship. We need to walk in it. This has to be a revelation in our hearts and it has to express itself through our actions each and every single day. So I hope you are blessed by this. Go, go to it. Read it in different translations if you want. Galatians 4 starts in uh, verse 1. Amen. That is one of my favorite scripture verses in Galatians about sonship. As long as a child, a son is a child, is not better than a slave or a servant. We are growing in our sonship. God created Adam, who was, who was a son, gave the dominion over the earth to Adam. Thank you, Theory, for that. That's powerful. That goes along with what we are going to learn today, trusting the Holy Spirit. So let me just open the slides here, then we'll pray. We'll jump in. Anybody else have anything to share? So today is the last time we will be doing the talking. Next week onwards, we are going to go into practical application of what you've been hearing. You are going to hear from different people who are applying what they have been hearing because the kingdom of God is not in talk. I can sit here and talk for the next 20 years, 40 years, but unless we apply it, the power won't manifest. Sometimes the religious folks think power means just healing the sick, casting out demons. That is the kind of power. But God's power manifests in different ways through different people. Depends on their calling and on their assignment. Just like the electricity is called power. And that power can function, demonstrate, various appliances and equipments, coffee machine, stove, heater, air condition, iron box, electric cars, your phone, everything works on power. Refrigerator, microwave, speakers, computers. There's power behind all these different equipments that we use, but different manifestations. So God wants to demonstrate manifest his power through the vessels of mercy that he has chosen us. There is power of God, kingdom of God living, residing within you. So let's pray this morning. I feel the glory of God already that uh, this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful session. Please take notes today as if your destiny depends on this. Please, take notes. As if your destiny depends on this. Heaven doesn't depend on what you're going to hear today. You will go to heaven. All you have to do is believe in Jesus. If you die, you will go to heaven. But fulfilling destiny is something different. Kingdom assignment. I heard of a man sharing a testimony that he had a visitation in heaven and he saw people, thousands, millions of people standing with their heads bowed down in shame, in sadness. And he was wondering why these people standing like ashamed. In heaven, this is heaven, people, after you die. That's why in Revelation it says, Jesus will wipe out their tears from their eyes from their face why there is tears in heaven we thought heaven has no sorrow or heaven has no disappointments or anything like that but in revelation we read about he will wipe their tears why there is tears in heaven when people recognize 
come to the realization why God put them on the earth and they didn't get a chance to fulfill it. That was that will be their disappointment when God shows them their blueprint of their life. This is what I have sent you to earth to fulfill. Oh my God, oh my God. People of God, listen to me. We were told that you had to go to school to get a job, to make some money, to make a living so you can pay your bills. That was a lie. What you and I have been told was a lie created by the systems of this world. I don't want to mention any governments, none of these things. They created the system and made us a slave to that system. And you and I become an instrument of this systems of this world to pay their taxes. We become a taxpayer. They call us a working class. What do, you, do you know what a working class means? I don't want to say it because it's very really offensive if I say it. The working class. You were sent here by God. God released you to this planet. Just like Adam was released in Genesis with an assignment. That's why we don't see this school system like we see in the Bible. How did they fulfill God's assignment? People in the Bible. Everyone had a different track. Everyone had a different path to follow. But we were all grew up with the same cookie cutter system. And we have been trapped into this for so long. But your spirit man has been crying out for so long. Because you knew there's something missing. Something is not right with this life what we call life, but you didn't know what it was, where to find the solution, where to find the answer for it until you hear the gospel of the kingdom of God. Revival will not satisfy you. Holy Spirit will not satisfy you. Tongues will not satisfy you. Ministry will not satisfy you. Crowds will not satisfy you. Money will not satisfy you relationship will not that the only thing that you will feel fulfilled when you discover God's kingdom and your assignment in it you could be sleeping under a tree you could be standing in a prison cell like I said like Paul was you'll be happy you'll be rejoicing you'll feel fulfilled in your spirit man because you're releasing what heaven wants to you to release on this planet earth. That's why this teaching, last week teaching, this week's teaching, listen to it, take notes as if your destiny depends on it. And we grew up in religion that told us Jesus came to save the sinners so we can go to heaven after we die. That is partially a lie. We will go to heaven. He came to save the sinners, but why he came to save the sinners? So he can restore us back to where Adam fell from. They didn't tell us the whole story. It has been hidden from the majority of the people. The gospel of the kingdom was hidden from most of the people. And now it is being revealed. It was hidden in plain sight. So Father... I thank you for this privilege. I thank you for this fire of your glory. I thank you for this opening up portals this morning, realms of glory upon your people right now. I thank you for opening their eyes. I arrest every stronghold of culture, race, religion, personal experiences. I arrest and I forbid them to operate in Jesus Christ's holy name. Let every hearts, eyes, ears be open to receive what the Spirit of the Lord will reveal today, Father. Give us the grace to apply this, put into work, put into application so that the next generation will not succumb to the lies that we were unknowingly, Father. We thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for the mercy. 
I bless you people this morning, this afternoon, this evening, all over the world, listening to me, will be watching later online. I bless them, empower them to receive and to release what heaven deposited into their spirit man. We thank you, Lord. We humbly come. Feed us. Speak to us. Let my words be pleasing, my thoughts. Only your words, Father, through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So last week, we started this journey, people of God. I am not joking. This is, if I could tell you what I feel, what I sense in my spirit, it is, it okay. is heaven on earth. So what we heard last week is dominion. What is dominion? God has created us to rule and reign on the earth. How do we rule and reign? We are all created as kings and priests at the same time. Not some are kings, some are priests. Every believer in Christ are a king and a priest at the same time. In the old covenant, only some were kings and others were priests. But in the new covenant, all these anointings and callings come together. You are kings and priests. At the same time, you carry that mantle upon you. And I call those kingship mantle to manifest. I call those priestly prophetic mantles to manifest in your life. That a slavery of this world system might end. So you and I have been lied by the system that you had to go to school to get a job, to make some money. Then you give more money through taxes and this and that, and you get to be free and live your life. No, you've been sent by God to this earth from the time you were born again. Like I said last week, Adam didn't have to wait to be born again because he was created by God. He was not born into a world system. He was born into God's kingdom to begin with. But you and I didn't get a chance because of the fall. We were born into this world system. And at some point, you hear the gospel of the kingdom, gospel of the grace, gospel of salvation, whatever you want to call it. All of a sudden, the seed of God's word comes into your spirit man. God opens your spirit man and you receive a glimpse of your destiny, glimpse of your future. God has prepared for you before the foundation of the world. From the moment you're born again, you're supposed to take a transition I want to say that again. From the time you are born again, you're supposed to take a transition in fulfilling that kingdom assignment, not continuing as a slave to the world system. But most, it doesn't happen because we thought we got born again to go to heaven and we have been waiting for rapture. We didn't know the purpose of being born again, according to Jesus in John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom. He, God wants to show you the kingdom. That's why he gave you the opportunity to be born a second time. Born again means again, a second time, naturally First time you were born, you were born into this world system. But when you're born again, you're born into a kingdom. Your patriotism from the time of born again should be for God's kingdom, not the country of your natural birth. That's a revolutionary thing. Your patriotism must be, your allegiance must be to God and his kingdom first. After you're born again. I don't know how many of you can accept that. Accept it or not. That is the truth. <laughs> you are leaving a country behind of your natural birth. You're entering into God's kingdom. Like Jesus said in John chapter 5, 3 verse 5. Unless you're born of water and spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of God. 
God. You enter the kingdom. Then you inherit the kingdom. Then you manifest the kingdom. That's why we are here to learn today. How do we manifest this kingdom that we saw? How do we manifest the kingdom that is inside us? So the parable that Jesus shared in Luke chapter 19, verse 13, the last parable Jesus shared, he told his servants, his disciples, occupy till I come. Not pack your bags and wait for something to happen or talk about what the devil is doing on a TV screen. No, occupy, focus on, take ground for God's kingdom. Occupy means, write this down, take ground and hold it for God's kingdom. Because the previous verse says the disciples thought the kingdom of God is going to appear immediately. I was sharing with a group prior to this meeting a few minutes ago about this. They thought the kingdom of God automatically is going to appear out of nowhere. Jesus said, no, it's not going to come like that. You have a role to play in manifesting God's kingdom on the earth. Everybody say, I have a role. Please write this down. I have a role in manifesting God's kingdom on the earth. You and I have a specific role. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is a king's domain. So this is part two of exercising domain. And if you haven't listened to the part one, please go to the Kingdom University channel on YouTube. Please watch it because that is foundation. Now that we are going to deeper to the part two of keys to exercising dominion. What is kingdom? Kingdom is a king's domain. As you heard, you and I are created as kings. Every king's need a domain. How do we exercise our kingship on the earth as a kingdom citizen, as a sons and daughters of God, as theory just read the words this morning? You have you and I have been adopted, receive the adoption, receive the spirit of sonship. Because God is king. He's the king of kings. Everyone comes out of him, bears the same image and likeness of a king. But most of us, positionally kings, but we don't have rulership right now. We don't have reign yet. Because we haven't managed what God has given it to us. We haven't maximized the opportunity and the resources God has given it to us. Because we have been doing this and that and that and this for so many years. Now as the time has come to establish your domain. To occupy. To take territory for God's kingdom. And hold it until he comes back. Because Jesus is coming back for a kingdom. Not to escape you out of this earth. So what is a domain? That's my subject today. What is kingdom? A king's domain. What is a domain? Many of you are technological world. You understand a domain. You buy a domain when you want to build a website. You buy a domain name. That is your digital address or address in the digital world. Write this down. Your domain is your address. That's how people locate you. Your domain is where people find you, locate you. Your domain is your address in a given space. Either digital, spiritual, natural, economical. Your domain is the space that you occupy. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain. They did not keep the position, the assignment, the address, the location. God has given it to them and they said we want to do something different. 
We want to go someplace else. We want to create our own address, location, and assignment. We don't want to submit to God's assignment and domain. And they left. And what happened to them? But left their own abode. He has reserved in everlasting chain. What happens to a person, a system, or a country who leaves their domain? They end up in captivity. Activity. They end up in bondage. They end up in slavery. The reason you are in economic slavery, the reason you are in emotional bondage, because you have left the domain as a son, as a king in God's kingdom. It's dangerous to leave your domain. Write that down. It is dangerous. It is very dangerous to leave your domain. What is a domain? Please write these down as if your destiny depends on this. An area of territory owned or controlled by a ruler or government. Is a domain. Some of you need to watch this again slowly because I cannot wait everybody to take notes because we have limited time in front of us. What is a domain? A specified sphere of activity or knowledge that you possess. Ooh, specified. Not jack of all trade, but specified sphere of activity or knowledge. That is a domain. You are not created to do everything. You are not created to know everything. You don't need to know everything. But you are created to know something well, better than other people. That is your domain. As a king. What good is a king without a domain? What is a domain? A sphere of influence over a realm or territory, either in the spirit or in the natural. A sphere of influence. When you manifest your domain, you manifest a sphere of influence. Babylonian system calls it leadership. They went after leadership. Who wants to be a leader? How to be a leader? No. Go back to dominion. You will have influence. You don't try to be a leader. You don't need to do anything to be a leader. Just exercise the dominion mandate God has given it to you and you will automatically be a leader, a son in God's kingdom. What is a domain? A space or territory, both visible and invisible, governed by you. You, Dr. Rose, Dr. Civiller, Katie, Sucks, Theory. A space or territory, whether it is chicken, whether it is rabbits, whether it is cryptos. A space or territory, either natural or spiritual. That's what Jesus said, occupy till I come. Take territory for God's kingdom. How do we do it? Until now, only we have been talking. Everybody's talking about kingdom. How this kingdom is going to manifest. The talk of the day, the cliche of the day is kingdom. But most people just keep on repeating the same old thing they always did. That's not kingdom. That is dumb. But we are talking about domain. As a king. How do you manifest your domain as a king? As a queen in God's kingdom. As a son. As a daughter. What is a domain? An area of interest. Or an area over which a person has control. 
or manage. This is your domain that you manage. You maximize it. You carry it with you. Once you understand, apply domain, you don't need to look for a job ever in your life. Did you hear what I said? Unemployment is not the problem. Poverty is not the problem. Government is not the problem because some of the kingdom citizens in the Bible who lived and fulfilled their assignment, they lived in the worst anti-Christian God, governments and kings. But that did not stop them because no governments, no kings, presidents or king or a prime minister can stop God's kingdom because God's kingdom rules everything, every government, every king, every... Whew. Some of us are so worried about the next election. Every four years we go into this frenzy. It's a game. Don't pay attention to it. Pay attention to your domain that God has given it to you. Don't be a victim of devil's schemes and games he plays on the TV screen. And then you go and talk about it. I will come to that in a minute. Do you know who keeps the devil in business? Do you know who promotes and do free advertisement for Satan? Christians. The devil does something somewhere and all of a sudden a billion Christian will jump in the, in the wagon and they will spread it like, oh my God, look at what the devil is doing. Look at what the devil is doing. Let me ask you a question. Do you think if you do something for God, all this anti-Christian people share what you do on their platforms and, oh, look at this Christian is doing. Look at that child of God is doing. They don't then why do you give free advertisement to the devil and his kingdom? The reason we do that because we don't see what our heavenly father is doing. We are so blinded from what our heavenly father is doing because we grew up under religious spirit. We can only see what the religious father is doing, which is the devil. I'm sorry to say that. But a child of God must see what his or her heavenly father is doing. He's so focused. Jesus was not walking around talking about what Satan is doing. Oh, look at that. Oh my God, disciples, did you see that? What, what happened in Galini or what happened in, what happened in Herod's temple? No. Jesus did not come to talk about what the devil is doing. Jesus came to fulfill the will of his father. And he said, I speak only what I hear, what my father is speaking. I do only what I see my father is doing. Why don't you make a decision in your life today? You are not here to make free advertisement to the devil and his kingdom. Do not spread what he's doing. Do not share. Because the more you share, the bigger it gets. The more attention it gets. I don't know why I said that. That's not part of my message, but that's free. You don't need to pay for that. That's free. So what's a domain? A domain is a territory governed by a single ruler or government, a realm. You have been created to govern a realm for God, representing his kingdom, accomplishing his will. By the time you leave this planet, that realm, that territory must look like heaven. Oh my God, I just said something so powerful. I don't know if you caught it. You were created by God to govern, to hold a territory, a space for God's kingdom. And by the time you leave this planet, it must look like heaven. Then you fulfill your assignment. Then you can walk with your face up in heaven when you meet the Father. Then you will hear faithful, good, and faithful servant 
you have accomplished. You will say, Lord, I was paid tax to this government. I paid this to that government. I was part of this team, this sports team, and this and that and that and this, my people of God. You are like a soldier fighting, living for a country, but that country is not on the earth. It is a heavenly country. You've been signed up. You've been assigned your life. That's why you receive Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. What does that mean? From that day, he is our owner. He owns us. We belong to him. What we made this religious thing all about ourselves. Me going to heaven. Oh, rapture is coming. Oh, it's me, myself, and I. No. This is about God and his kingdom. That's why you are here. So what is a domain? What is domain include? Your domain is the combination of three things. Please don't forget. Write these down. Your domain as a king is the combination of three things. Your identity as sons, as we just heard. Thank you, theory. See, that's how God, spirit work. What if theory didn't read that verse today? If the Holy Spirit didn't tell him to inspire him, because always the Spirit of God works in agreement. What if theory says the rapture is coming on October 13th? That is of the devil. <laughs> you know? But in him, theory carries the spirit of sonship. So your domain is a combination of three. Your identity as a son, your calling, and your gifts and your skill, you developed and mastered. It doesn't happen by chance. It takes the dedication of a pregnant woman. I'm going to tell you that in a minute, how that works. How do you master a gift and a skill to fulfill your kingdom assignment? And the third part of your domain is the products and services that you offer to your sphere of influence, which are your fruits. Why God said, be fruitful. Jesus said in John 15, I have chosen you and appointed you that you may go and bear fruit. That is the fruit that you're bringing. Your product and the services that came as a result of managing and maximizing the gifts, the skills, the opportunities that God has given you. Nobody needs to live in poverty on this face of the earth. What they're missing is the gospel of the kingdom of God. There's no need anybody to be poor on the earth if they understand the gospel of the kingdom of God. But we turned it into a religion we turned this into an escapist mentality where God put us to have domain and dominion as a result. And the enemy has deceived us, blinded us for so long. But we are going to stand up and say no more. Everybody say no more. No more deceptions. No more lies of the enemy. There is a generation of people God is raising up who have discovered their domain. Why do we need a domain? How do you create your domain? Three things. By recognizing and mastering your skills, gifts, and potentials. Everybody has potential. You may not be particularly good at something, but if you have a body that moves and breathes, that means you have potential. You choose something that you like, you're passionate about, and you focus on that. You may say, oh, God didn't call me. Oh, I didn't have a dream. Or I didn't have a burning bush experience. No, you have a body. You don't need to have hands or feet either. Just a body that breathes, like Nick Vujic, who made a million or millions the potential he has manifesting through him and you and I. 
in the physical, intellectual, or in the spiritual spheres or space, that's where you manifest your domain in the physical, intellectual. Physical means include the whole earth, everything, the 12 components of the kingdom nation. The purpose of all those 12 components is to do one thing. When we are done with it, we'll have dominion on the earth. That's the purpose of 12 components of God's kingdom nation. Intellectual space. Who occupies your mind? Who occupies your thoughts? Or do you occupy somebody else's mind? Like Jesus said, occupy. Is Facebook occupy? Is Instagram or some TV shows, some movies? Who is occupying your space? Your intellectual space that God has given it to you. How many people's intellectual space that do you occupy? Or spiritual spheres. My Lord, my God. Is anybody listening to me today? Is everybody okay? I am in a different realm here. Amen. I, Amen. I, am, I am like connected to heavens in a... Amen. In a fire hose. So please, Amen. stay with me. Take notes by manifesting the kingdom that is within you. That's how you create your domain. Matthew 5 verse 14, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Everybody say, I am the light of this world. I am the light of this world. What is light means? Light means revelation. Light means solution. Light means blueprint. A city. What is a city? You need to become a city. Your sphere of influence or domain. Cities where trades that happens. Cities where people dwell, occupy. A city that is a domain that is set on a hill that occupies a specific space, made it visible or manifested, cannot be hidden. Once you discover your domain, you cannot remain hidden. Please write that down. Once you discover your domain, you cannot be hidden. You cannot remain hidden. People will come looking for you. Why people go to a city? People love to visit cities, travel to cities. They leave everything they have, go to a city. Why? Because they have found, they heard something about that city. And they travel oceans and mountains and hills and everywhere to reach that city. You become a city like that once you discover your domain. People will come from all over the place looking for you. You become like a city hidden on a hill once you discover your domain. Kingdom evangelism. Once that happens, what happens? Kingdom evangelism happens. We all grew up hearing personal evangelism, crusade evangelism, prophetic evangelism, power evangelism, personal evangelism, street evangelism, but we didn't hear about kingdom evangelism, how the people in the Bible evangelized. What did Jesus mean when he said to shine your light or let others see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven? This is what he meant. Let your light, your calling or your seed, like you heard last week. So shine before men you don't need to go to the preach to them. You just shine your light that they may see your good works, your domain, and glorify your Father in heaven. Become a witness. Automatically, you become a witness for God. That good works doesn't mean charitable works. That's what the religious spirit told us. Helping the poor, doing free distribution of food. No, good works means enterprise. 
something you do with your hand, your domain, your skillful manifestation of God's calling on your life. That is what good works, ergon in Greek means. And when they see that, they will say, look at that. Look at that city. Look at that person. We want to go there. We want to see that. And what if as a family, as an ecclesia, as a team here, all of us manifest this thing, what we are preaching. But some of us still have that church, religious pastor mentality. Pastor Abraham is going to preach and we just come and listen and then go on with our life. No, that's not kingdom. What is kingdom evangelism? Your domain creates influence. Please write that down. Your domain creates influence. Influence, listen to this, gives specific jurisdiction over a particular territory or space. Oh, this is so deep, people. I hope you're catching this. Your influence will give you specific jurisdiction. You don't need to fight. You don't need to be jealous over somebody. You don't need to take somebody else's blessing, steal, rob, or take it by force or manipulate, do anything. You, nobody can steal your domain. Nobody can steal your calling. Nobody can steal your gifts that God has given it to you. No witch doctor, no magician. That you might feel temporarily attacked by certain things. But I tell you, when the fire of God of the Holy Spirit falls on you, those things will be broken off. In Jesus Christ's holy name, some of your chains are falling off right now. Misunderstanding, miscommunications, every kind of bondages that are holding you back in ignorance and in, in, and in a stuck mode. I break that in Jesus Christ's holy name. Loose! And let them go. Let that chain follow. Influence gives specific jurisdiction over a particular territory or space. You rule and reign over that jurisdiction or space with excellence. You rule and reign. How, that's how we manifest your kingship in God's kingdom on the earth. Not, not walking around with a guitar or shouting at Satan, spitting at any demons. No. Once your domain manifests, no demons can remain in that space. Why demons harass you? Because you are not ruling. You are not reigning in God's kingdom. Influence gives you access. What is kingdom evangelism? That influence that brings you as a result of you exercising your domain gives you access to certain people. Certain groups of people, which is your tribe, which is your clan, which is your family, which is your whatever you want to call it. Then using that influence to witness for God, that's what people in the Bible did. This is how you manifest your kingdom kingship on the earth. As a king in God's kingdom, you have to have this in place. What is kingdom evangelism? When each believer is equipped and released to fulfill their purpose by discovering their unique calling, by mastering their natural and spiritual gifts 
skills and potential which create influence and then using that influence to witness for Jesus and if necessary, if necessary, preach. When this happens, you don't need to preach. But my job is to preach. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's my assignment to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. That's part of my assignment. This is the result. When each believer do this, the following results will manifest on the earth. Everything that we have been trying to make it happen will be a byproduct of each of us manifesting our domain. It's a byproduct. Evangelism, soul winning, helping the poor, widows, chickens, whatever it is, it's all a byproduct. Why they are not manifesting now? Because we are trying to put the cart before the horse. We are trying to put the cart before the horse. It will not work. There are 22 results that will happen as a result of each believer manifesting their kingdom, kingdom domain. One, dispel darkness. Because you are the light. What is the solution for darkness? Show up. When the light shows up, darkness dispels, disappears on its own. You don't need to exert any energy. You don't need to talk to darkness. You don't need to rebuke that. You don't need to kick it. Just show up. When light shows up, darkness cannot remain because Jesus said, you are the light of this world. But why this is not happening? Because we don't have the domain ready yet. Say, I'm, I'm the light of this world. I didn't say it. Jesus said that. Second result, Ecclesias will be established. When this happens, all those like-minded believers will come together and form Ecclesias all over the world. Every city, every town need a governing body of God's kingdom on the earth. When each of us bring that light together, shining it brighter. When those domains partner together, work together, then the rest is history. We will take and hold territory for God's kingdom. We will occupy like Jesus told us to do. Territory in all spheres, natural, spiritual, intellectual, and even in space. Possess enemies' gates. Each of this teaching that I'm giving you now, this week, last week, and this week, each of the statement needs to be elaborated. This is like a three years worth of teaching I'm giving you in two weeks. What is an enemy's gate? Read the Ecclesia book. <laughs> because gates, any spirit to operate on the natural realm requires a gate. You can write that down. Any spirit operate to operate in the natural realm requires a gate. Somebody has to open the gate or be the gate. When we manifest our domain as kings on the earth, you know what happens? It will shrink Satan's kingdom and its operation on the earth. That's a byproduct. It will start to shrink Jesus defeated Satan on the cross, but he's still acting like nothing happened to him. Why? Because the kings that God has put on the earth, the sons of God, has not taken their place. They have not manifested their domain. When you and I manifest our domain, Satan's kingdom will begin to shrink and shrink and shrink, and we won't give any more free advertisement to devil and what he's doing. 
you've got the legal right to operate on the earth through that person and system. When we exercise our domain, manifest our domain as kings, it gives legal right. God needs legal right. That's why he created us and put us here and gave us the dominion. When God gave dominion, let them, in Genesis 1.28, God did not include himself in the dominion mandate. He handed it over to humans to decide what needs to happen and what shouldn't happen on the earth. Jesus told us the same thing in Matthew 16, 19. I give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you forbid on the earth, it will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you lose, whatever you allow, permit on the earth, it will be permitted by heaven. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a byproduct. The next one, the saints will possess the kingdom of God. Like we read in Daniel chapter 7 and 2. Please read them when you have a chance. The saints will possess the kingdom of God forever. It will not be taken away from us. Jesus came to give us a kingdom. Luke chapter 12 verse 32, he said, it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom but it hasn't manifested yet. Why? Because the kings haven't discovered their domain yet. We are doing this and that, listening to this teaching, that teaching. We'll go from this meeting to that meeting and our life is disappearing in front of us. We Tuesday morning, another meeting. Wednesday night, another Ecclesia meeting. Thursday, another group. And then Saturday, then Sunday back here. How much time do you spend in creating your domain? God's kingdom will be established on the earth. The whole earth will be filled with God's glory. Satan will lose grounds and his hold on the earth and the world. That's a byproduct. It's not going to happen by shouting. Is not going to happen by spitting. It is by manifesting our domain. We gain territory for God's kingdom. You won't be poor anymore. Money won't be an issue for you. When you manifest your domain, when you become a city set on a hill, money won't be an issue. You won't be poor anymore. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that you need will be added to you. It will come to you. Communities will get transformed. How do we get transformed communities and cities? When each believer, the light they carry, the seed they possess, the kingdom they created to manifest, the domain they need to exercise dominion the territory they need to exercise dominion over the communities the space get increased somebody is doing something armando is doing um, agriculture katie is doing chicken and uh, <laughs> and uh, ken is doing um, uh, golf that is that is his passion He's going to train a golf team for God's kingdom. Right, Ken? <laughs> That's his domain. He's going to train anybody who wants to play golf. I'm just saying. Nations will get discipled. How this is going to happen? We follow the dominion mandate. Souls will be brought to the kingdom as a byproduct. Everything Adam lost will be restored back to us. Everything will be restored back to us. And Jesus will say, good job, guys. The price I paid, the suffering I went through, the blood that I shed is not just to make you escape this world and reach heaven. No, I have paid the price in for your redemption. 
and Jesus will be proud. Everything Adam lost and the father will feel honored because of what he sent his son to do for us on the earth. Now we are running around like a chicken who's got head cut off. Saying, oh my gosh, look at that Satan is doing there. Oh, the Olympics. Somebody did it at the Olympics and somebody did it somewhere else. Why? Because we don't have domain. We lost our dominion. That's where we are taken back and forth, tossed back and forth like a wind with every doctrine, every every flint of news that comes out. Christians get rattled. Every notion of news that comes out there. Do you know who gets rattled the most? Christians. Why? Because they, they don't know who they are. They don't know why God put them on the earth and tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. No more death. One of these days, Jesus is going to hand over the key of death to somebody because he holds the key of death and hell. And we are going to unlock death and say, done, that's the last enemy. No more death. The earth will be restored. This earth will be restored. When Christ come into an individual, he is declared a new creation. When Christ's kingdom comes to this earth, this earth will be turned into a new earth. If anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. Anyone, if anything of this earth is in Christ, it is declared new. Oh my Lord, I just gave you the key of a mystery. If anyone is in Christ, is what? Is a new creation. He's new. If anything of this earth comes back into Christ because he consists of everything. When it comes back into Christ, domain, it will be declared new. New earth, new heaven. New earth and new heaven will be manifested. Kingdom, nation will be established as a result. We will reign with Jesus forever and ever. As we read Revelation 22, we will reign. This is this is a thousands of years of vision I'm giving you right now. Thousands of years it might take to fulfill this. But we have an immediate application for each one of us lives. Our destiny depends on this, what we do. Our future generation's destiny depends on what we do now and what we do with ours, our life. That's how we create that momentum. That's what David did. That's what Abraham did. God told Abraham, I will make you a great nation. But Abraham did not become a great nation until 400 and some years later. So what I'm sharing with you is the big picture with an immediate application individually to everyone listening to me here. When we do that individually, this corporate vision, dream of God will be fulfilled on the earth. This is what the church should be teaching the people from day one. About your identity, dominion mandate, what is kingdom, why Jesus preached about the kingdom more than any other subject, more than talking about antichrist and end of the world and all these things that is irrelevant actually. End of the world is not a part of scripture. End of the age. That's a wrong translation. Many Christians are looking for the Antichrist to manifest than Christ. Why? That shows the, what spirit is ruling in them. Every spirit is not the Holy Spirit. Every Jesus is not the same Jesus. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 1 and 3. 1 to 3. You know what spirit is of God, which Jesus is the right Jesus, 
if that Jesus comes with the kingdom. You cannot separate Jesus from his kingdom. How do you know if it is the Holy Spirit? If you have any sense of your destiny, your future, your purpose, your assignment, God has put in you, or only you look for some emotions or goosebumps, that's how you know the true spirit from the false demonic spirits out there or kundalini spirit. My God, my God, this is powerful, guys. I lost all my offering today. This is what equipping the saints for the work of the ministry means. Not to teach you how to take an assuring, to take offering, how to change diapers, how to direct. Oh, I don't want to say all those things. Leave that. Equipping means to help you discover what is inside you. What you carry from God, from heaven. What you came to release. That is what equipping means. Equip the man of God for every good works. And then release them. This is how the people in the world will come to know the real Jesus, the king. When each believer manifests the kingdom that is within them by shining the light, infiltration into every spheres of this world system will begin to happen. You don't need to make any noise. You don't need to protest. You don't need to shout. You don't need to make any noise. How do people like, oh my Lord, help me here. Secret societies recruit people. They don't make any noise. They don't advertise on television. They don't see you running crusade to recruit people for their cult group. But their cult group has been running and ruling this world for thousands of years. How do they do that? Because they understand the kingdom more than we do. I cannot say everything right now publicly. I want you to discern. From what I am sharing, things are exploding in your spirit, man. That is the real revelation. The leaven of the kingdom, as Jesus said in Matthew 13, will begin to permeate the culture and the community around us. First, it will be hidden. First, it will be invisible. Because that's how leavens work, east work. The leaven of the kingdom will begin to permeate the culture and the community around us. If we keep on waiting, saying, I don't have the education, unemployment in my country is so high, poverty is the problem, wrong political party is in power, those are all excuses. Nothing will happen. Because God's kingdom is not waiting for the right political party or a president or a prime minister or the right king. No. God's purpose is only waiting for one thing. His timing and a person to believe it. Religious spirit has made us ignorant, lazy, unproductive. And puppets of a system. That's why I said today is the last day we talk about this. Next week onwards, we are stepping into the practical application of this. You are going to hear from different people who is applying what you heard last week and this week. Next week onwards, so don't miss it. How the light, seed, calling, or the kingdom that was in the people manifested during the Bible times. Let's check some example. Daniel. After Daniel went through the training for three years. Some of you have been part of this training. Almost four years now. Even though Ecclesia has been only running for two years. I started the kingdom school in 2020. Daniel went through three years of training. They found, them, found him 10 times better than the people around him. And the king appointed for them daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them. Everybody said three years. It takes time. So that at the end of that time, they might serve before the king. 
Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better. God's children should be ten times better than the people of this world. That much of demand you should put it on your potential and your skill and the gifts that God has given you. If you have to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning, exercise for six hours to compete in an Olympics, which lasts for eight seconds, how much longer we should practice, exercise, prepare for a race that God has set before us in his kingdom. Ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. One word is missing there. I don't know what happened there. Esther, after Esther went through the purification process for 12 months, she was chosen as the queen. Everybody say it takes time. Don't do this for three weeks and you get frustrated and throw it and say, oh, this is too much. It's too hard. You will have to hit that spot too hard a hundred times in your life in doing kingdom assignment. And maybe a thousand times you will have to cry and say, this is too hard. You will. If you are not, that means you're not doing something worthwhile. You're playing a game. You're staying in your comfort zone. If you are not crying, saying this is too hard, I'm telling you the truth. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. What if Esther didn't prepare but just showed up? You say, Ooh, I speak in tongues, I sing hallelujah. No, 12 months of preparation to come before the king. That is the honor you are showing to the king. How do you honor the king of kings and the Lord of lords? By the time you spent in preparation. Oh my Lord, I'm speaking to somebody here. Pharaoh said, there is no one in Egypt better than Joseph to handle the crisis of famine they were had. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? That Joseph became a city set on a hill, and he couldn't be hidden anymore. Daniel became a city set on a hill. He couldn't be hidden anymore. Esther became a city hidden on a hill. She couldn't be hidden anymore. The Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. They may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light shine before men. I'm reading two verses at the same time, simultaneously in the Spirit, so you understand both at the same time, the new and the old. You shall be over my house. You will be a city set on a hill. And all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne, I will be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over a city on a hill. Because you shining your light. Now we are going to glorify your father in heaven. How did Pharaoh glorify the Father in heaven, by seeing Joseph's light because he became a city having a domain, mastering his gifts and his skill that God has deposited them. What if he say excuses? I'm a slave. I'm in Egypt. I'm in prison. I can do anything. No. Your kingdom that you carry, nobody can put that kingdom in prison. Your kingdom are only in prison according to the, to the limit of your mindset. You become, you create your own prison. The kingdom that you carry, nobody can put that kingdom in a prison.
When you stop worrying about who, this is what it is. When you stop worrying about survival and start focusing on your purpose, calling, potential, gifts, and skills, and mastering them, that's when you know you received the revelation of the kingdom of God. That's how you know if you understood this or not. All these years, you've been listening, reading, studying, part of this, others listening to other people, teaching, other ecclesias, other kingdom teachers. But the moment you stop worrying about your survival and start focusing on your purpose, calling and potential, that's when you know, okay, I understand God's kingdom now. Seek first the kingdom. I sought the kingdom. I understand it, how it operates, how it functions. Now, until then, we are just using some kingdom verbiage. But by default, still rooted in the same old religious belief system that we grew up in and looking for the same old religious rituals and experiences and goosebumps as we always used to, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, we are deceiving ourselves. My Lord, that is strong. Then we give free advertisement to what the devil is doing. To master something, it requires undivided focus, discipline, and determination. It will take three to five years. It took me 30 years to learn this. To master the subject of God's kingdom. To write 40 books. Develop all these courses and still continue to do. But once you get the formula, once somebody figured this out, you can walk that trail. You don't have to create, reinvent the wheel. Three to five years of undivided dedication to one thing. Not running around doing everything everybody wants you to do. It will cost you something. But it might cost you everything. It costed me everything. Everything I ever built, connected to, relationships, I have to walk away. I was like that man who found the kingdom of heaven hidden in a field like a treasure. He went and sold all that he had and came back and bought that field. I am one of those men. It will cost you everything. You need the discipline of a pregnant woman. <laughs> Why do I, why did I use that word? Because pregnant woman cannot do just anything and everything. She has, she is mindful of the baby she carries. Be mindful of the seed that you carry. Be mindful of the kingdom assignment you came to release. Undivided attention and care. Or the person who is preparing to compete in Olympics. That is the kind and the level of dedication and commitment it will require from you to accomplish your kingdom destiny. Otherwise, it is just a bunch of talks. That much of dedication will require from you. It will demand every ounce. It will require... Like I said, the religious spirit made people so lazy. And they give free advertisement to the devil. And they become the judge of everything. They judge everything that walks and moves. Why? Because we have no domain. People who have domain, they have no time for anything else. After you do this, this is my final statement. After you do this, nothing happens. You come back and tell me, Abraham, this kingdom message doesn't work. I will take care of you for the rest of your life. What a better deal can you get? <laughs> After you do this and nothing happens, your life is still the same as it was when you started, you come back and tell me, I will provide for you basic needs. Your food and your lodging and your clothing will be provided for the rest of your life. Guaranteed. But you have to show me that you did this. Show it to me. Not talk to me, Abraham. I listened to your teaching. No, 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 no. Show it to me those steps. Domain. Where's your domain? 
What are the gifts and skills that you mastered in the last five years? What is the assignment? What, what is the kingdom that you saw when you're born again? I'll tell you, you will not be the same. A, a new kingdom version of you will emerge from this. Write that down. A new kingdom version needs to emerge out of you. Not the religious mindset, the religious version, the cultural version of we grew up in, whatever nationality we grew up in, a new kingdom version of you as a person, as an individual, has to emerge out of the cocoon of discipline, determination, dedication, prayer, fasting, giving, learning, unlearning. And when you do that, what you bring to the Father, after you maximize your potential gifts, skills, is your best offering to the Lord that you can bring. And that is the greatest form of worship you can give to God Almighty. Otherwise, it is just a lip service. That's not worship. That is the greatest form of worth ship worth ship something is of worth something is of value that you're bringing it to god and say father you gave me five talents here is 10 you gave me two here is four and the father will say good job otherwise we'll be standing with our heads down ashamed Well done, good and faithful servant. I gave it to you four. I gave it to you five. I gave you five. You made 10 out of it. I gave you two. You multiplied. You traded it and brought four. May the Lord cause this to manifest in each one of your life in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Everybody just raise your hands. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. Say this after me. Say this after me. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. For your glory. For your glory. Help me to carry it. Help me, Help me, to, carry me to carry it. Help me to manifest it. Help me. Help me to manifest it. Destroy my ignorance. Destroy my ignorance. Destroy the religious spirit and its bondage. Destroy the religious spirit and its bondages. Help me to manifest the kingdom. Help me to manifest the kingdom. We can good and faithful servant. A good, a good and faithful servant. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you taught me today. Thank you for, for what you taught me today. Hold it close. I'm going to hold it close. I hold it tight. I hold it tight. Lord, I want to hold it close and tight. I give you all the glory, praise, and honor. Thank you for all the praise, praise, praise and honor. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Put a hand, please. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh. Yeah, but go down because you. <laughs> you have no idea what happened to you today. Yeah. Glory. You have been shifted into a new location in the spirit. Something happened to your spirit man today. If you heard me, if you heard this and received it, something has shifted. And please don't take it lightly. This is not a normal thing that happened today. Okay. This is a divine moment, a prophetic moment. God is showing you the blueprint, giving you the answers. Now we have to do the homework. And he's waiting for us. So any comments, questions, 
If you are new here and if you want to be part of the Ecclesia WhatsApp group, leave your name and your country code and phone number in the chat room and Mama Pedro will collect your name and your phone number will add you to the WhatsApp group that we have. That's where all the communication, questions, what everybody's doing happens and they share in a regular basis. And so if you want to be part of that Ecclesia group, please leave your name, your country code, make sure you leave your country code and your phone number and we will get that for you. And next week, so before some people leave, I'm going to share this because you need to hear this. Next week, we are going to hear practical application of this dominion mandate God gave to us, how each one of us is going to exercise this, okay? So next week, on which different people are going to share what they're called to do, what is their assignment, what is the domain that they are creating. They may not have everything 100% ready, but whatever they have ready, we want to hear it because we are a family. We want to cheer you up. We want to encourage you. We want to support you. And we are going to build it together. Some of you have an answer, like I shared two weeks ago. Anybody knows if a trader, either crypto trader, forex trader, somebody went and found a person and brought it to us. And we jumped on that opportunity. That's how it works. Each one of you are important. Each one of you carry something special and valuable. Or you know somebody. That's how it happens. So next week onwards, we're going to hear. That's the only thing we will be doing. I won't be preaching. I nobody. This is not a preaching game. This is the domain manifestation time. Okay? You're not preparing three-point sermon, coming up with the next better, bigger revelation. No. This is practical application. So next week, my beloved brother, Shar Brett, is going to start. God has given him an assignment for Dominica and beyond. And he's going to share with us next week. The following week, uh, Ben Latumba. Ben, are you here, my brother? I'm sorry. Yes, he's here. Ben Latumba. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. He is a wonderful kingdom businessman based in Cape Town. The following week, Ben, please come and share with us, to the family, what you do with your construction, community building, whatever you're doing. Please share with us. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. I'll come through. Yeah. Prepare it, please. PowerPoint presentation, whatever you need, you bring it, whatever you did so far, what God has done, and where God is taking you. The following week, the third week, I'm just calling volunteers here. I haven't talked to anybody. I'm sorry. I'm doing like this, but this is the way to do it. The following week, Francis Klein. She is also from South Africa. She is on a kingdom venture uh, preparing bloom, um, spring water, water, water project. And she's going to come and present her domain, her kingdom assignment. Is that okay, Francis? It's perfect. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> This is how this is how it works in the kingdom. You know, you don't know when the call of God is going to come. You have to be ready. <laughs> so we have three weeks ready. The fourth week, Armando. Where's my brother Armando? Armando, are you here or did he leave already? Okay, fourth week, um, Mike Allen. That's fine. My brother Mike, the business idea that you're working on, the fourth Sunday the product that you wanted to see manifest. We want to hear from you, which is the fourth Sunday. So first Sunday, next Sunday, it is Sharbert. Second Sunday, it's going to be Ben Latumba. Third week is going to be Francis Klein. And fourth week is going to be Mike. Mike, it's a, okay, my brother, please unmute. You got it, brother. I'll be there. Okay, fourth week. That whole Sunday is yours. Yes. There's no other preaching, sharing, nothing. That whole Sunday is your day. We are focusing on you. The spotlight will be on you. You bring that domain 
what you carry, the kingdom that you carry, that you want to manifest the best way that you carry. Because we're all work in progress. We don't have it all together yet. Tomorrow we'll have more details. Next day we'll have more. But whatever you have, God works with what we have. That's how it works in God's kingdom. So next four weeks, I'm looking for a guest speaker, a specific guest speaker with emotional healing. Because what is holding most of us back is the emotional baggage we carry. I'm telling you, that is the only hindrance you have. And the devil pulled that string. So don't go after the devil. Remove the things that gives him the space to come and harass you. So I'm trying to contact a, a lady here. Uh, it's a pathway to emotional healing. So she's going to come and tell us and present that book. And one of the Sundays, Bridget will be presenting um, her. And each of you will have an opportunity. I'm telling you. So start working now. Dr. Priscilla will be presenting. So what you heard last two weeks, start applying now. And when the time, when your time comes, you're ready to present your domain to the world, your light, the seed, the kingdom that you carry. So everybody good with that? Thumbs up? Yes. All right. Yes. Good to see you, Yodham, after a long time. Anybody has Thank any you. questions, comments, feedback from what you heard today? Anything? We want to hear from some new people that usually don't share. Because we have a lot of... Priscilla, welcome back, my sister. Good to see you here. Uh, anybody? Any comments? Any questions? Any I, feedback? I would like to share... Um for uh, a very quick moment to say thank you, Abraham, for uh, manifesting and for being a, really a model of what we're doing together here. You're, you're expressing and you're modeling uh, what it looks like to uh, the law of dominion. I'm I'm seeing this expression of the law of dominion and how it presents itself, how it shows up in the world, what it's supposed to look like. Um, many are, are showing up in the world, but not everyone uh, is expressing uh, a dominion mandate uh, for the kingdom of God. And so I just wanted to say thank you for that. I just kept feeling two things, actually. One is this, this expression I, I hope, I pray, my heart is, um, was there was a yearning uh, that I felt uh, on behalf of myself and hopefully everyone um, that was present this morning that we were laying hold of what truly was taking place here, what was transpiring. And um, this was, this, this was really from, uh, we were transported to another realm. And as that was taking place, this is what I heard, that there was a, dis, a dispensing, a dispensation, if you will, a release um, from heaven, right, over those who had an ear to hear today. For those that had an ear to hear, God released a new baptism for new realms. I'm going to say that again. There was, we were baptized. There was a, a baptism. And while I don't fully understand, I just know that this is what I saw, what I experienced as I was sitting together with, with all of you uh, in this in this past hour. Certainly the, the presence of God, just so thick, mm -hmm. the glory of God, so evident. But I recognize that there was a, a, ba a new baptism from the Spirit of God for new realms. And those new realms, I, I believe you've identified them or you've helped give definition uh, for us. And that is uh, our domain, mm -hmm. each one of us, our domain, and then together the anointing and the cluster. 
that comes is almost indescribable for me anyway at this moment. So thank you very much. I I I am so um I'm so thankful to have come into um into this community, this ecclesia. I, I am so very thankful doesn't even express it enough to what I, I carry in my heart for uh being among all of you. And I look forward to getting to know uh, each of you as time goes on. But I, I couldn't uh, thank you for opening up the the opportunity uh, because it's just so I'm I'm uh, I'm still caught up. <laughs> the words escape me. But new baptism for new realms, beloveds. This was phenomenal. My mind is is exploding. Mm. And you talked about that explosion. Mm. You talked about that explosion. When that explosion happens, uh, when it begins to take place, when it's going on inside of us, there is something profound, something prophetic, something so very, um, it's, it's truth trying to establish itself, lay hold of us, capture us, captivate us, immerse us. And what God is saying to us and as individuals and then as an ecclesia. So thank you. Thank you again. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla. My God. <laughs> you and Ernie. Oh, my God. Thank God for both of you. Because, like I said, it's like family. You know, like God just brought together some people, you know, some some unique times or different times for his purpose. So I value, I appreciate you, what you carry, because you are so seasoned, matured. It's very rare to find people who have that maturity and who are seasoned in the Lord. And I feel privileged, you know. So I'm um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Because when God does something, I, I sense that in my spirit, because I saw that explosions happening in all of you, if you received it, that spirit putting all those pieces together, it's like a knitting going on and darkness being expelled. New light is taking place. New space is being created for God to move in and his kingdom and for the new manifestation of it. So I thank God for my brother, Jack, who's been praying, <laughs> you know, because this all happened because somebody is willing to sacrifice Somebody is willing to sacrifice for God's kingdom. So I appreciate each one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Like I said, what you receive today, please don't take it lightly. Take notes as if your destiny depends on it. Yeah. Not heaven. You will go to heaven without doing this. But if you want to fulfill your kingdom assignment on the earth, I believe God gave us something today to work on. So please listen to this. This teaching will be again posted on the Kingdom University channel, maybe within a few hours. James will do it and take notes. Listen to it slowly because my accent, I have a Kingdom accent. So you have difficulty with other nations, you know, receiving everything in one city. <laughs> So you have to listen to it slowly because that's how the kingdom citizens speak. <laughs> that was a joke. Well, I see many hands there. Latonia and Earl, I want to hear from them, please. My brother Earl, how are you doing, my friend? Sorry to hear the loss of a family member. Hope you're doing well, the rest of the family. Yes, we're doing good. You're doing good. Uh Yes, I would like to say that um, I came from a, a religion, Baptist and Pentecostal. But you said something today that you had said before, and I would be on a call with Latanya, and I would just listen. But we was always taught that when Jesus came came on the face of earth, he came to redeem us back to the the father and that we were going to be in heaven around heaven 
and that he was building us houses and there was going to be golden roads and all we were going to do is sign thing. But you said something today and it pricked my spirit because you said we're going to be redeemed back to the place of Adam. And it made me, reminded me of the revelation that we are coming back to mm. this Jerusalem area. And that's where Jesus is going to come. But mm. when you said that today, it just touched my soul because I had been told that once you get saved, you're going to be in heaven. But it's just going to be only for a period. It ain't going to be there permanently. We are coming back to a new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. so, and that's that's what I want to share today. Thank you. That's wonderful. I'm happy to hear from you. I've been waiting. I want to connect with you and both of you. I've mm -hmm. been telling to Latonia. I want to connect with Earl. Is my brother there, you know. So thank you for sharing. Yes. So happy. So happy. Honored to have you with us. Thank you. It's like what I shared. You know, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. If anything of this earth is in Christ, is a new. That's how it's going to happen. The more territory we gain for God <laughs> his kingdom will be declared new and new and new. Then at the end, everything will be made new. Like Revelation says, everything is made new. Yes. That's how it's going to unfold. Yes, Martin, my brother, then Jefferson. Uh, I think Philip and was up before mine, um, Abraham. Philip, apparently, my brother. Okay, I'm doing very well. I really appreciate God for today. And uh, what strikes me today is that. Uh, <laughs> Whatever, whatever, whatever that is able to be brought into Christ, it becomes new, and that's why this world will be new. And uh, we are the agents to bring that reality on this planet. We don't need to wait for Him. He already came. He already did what He needed to do. But He's been waiting for us for these all these days, and it's such a blessing to know that. Uh, the reason why I lifted also my hands today is to agree with what you say. Uh, when I met you, like maybe seven years ago or eight years ago, I guess, um, and we became friends, and we began, uh, you began mentoring me and uh, raising me. Uh, there is, you say that statement. I need you, Philip, to follow me for the next five years. And if this does not work, <laughs> you know, but indeed I can say, it hasn't been easy, um, following and uh, following and. Uh, I, I will be telling a lie. There were times I really came to a place where I felt I, I have to. Yes. To the religious practices and all that. But you kept on coming and encouraging me and encouraging me. And for sure, I can say that uh, my assignment, I know God has called me to speak and all those kinds of things. But I've come to realize there are so many things that God had put into yeah. my life that I never realized it uh, because of a religious spirit. One of the things that I've come to discover lately is that I have a place in the marketplace and in business. I have a place in agriculture too. So, so and this will only have been realized through uh, the, the kingdom of God starting to manifest into my life. And when the idea of going to heaven began to be transformed and to know that my dominion is not in heaven, but here on earth, by God's grace, I've begun to create businesses and to run business back home in Kenya. And I'm trusting and believing God to have dominion over construction industry and delivering of building materials and eventually may eventually get into real estate. Uh, right now, God has blessed me with a truck, a dump truck, and I'm trusting God for the next dump truck. And uh, I have to become an influence in Kenya that for the kingdom, not for me, and to make myself a name. And so I could not have achieved this because I used just to see myself as a religious person, a man that would be able to take care of his family, maybe by depending upon 
uh, the well wishers donating money to me because of good preaching and becoming a good man of God to them and being able to minister to them. And so I can say it has paid off and it's still paying off. Uh, is there any challenges? There are so many challenges that comes with because the enemy will always try to fight and to stop the purposes of God of our lives. But I'm encouraged to know that I'm on the right track. And uh, and so my my prayer for you is that God may bless you and uh, elongate your life and keep on pouring into your life because you're so generous with every information that God is bringing into your life. Uh, just to share with us and for us to share with others in order to see the kingdom of God being manifest and people being liberated from the shackles of religion, practices and all those kinds of things. And I can tell you, this day, religion really irritates me. When I see something or someone, you know, it irritates me. And I was like, I look at times I watch at things and I'm like, really, I was into these things. Surely the enemy has really blinded a lot of people. But we know it is a process. God is bringing that uh, liberation. And as you say, when we begin to walk into the practicalities of manifesting the kingdom of God, we don't even need to go to the marketplaces. They will come to us. And I have seen that. I began seeing that. They will come to us because we have the solution. We have a direction to give. And that's when now the kingdom will begin even to manifest into their lives. Appreciate you so much, Apostle. God bless you. Thank you, Philip. Good to hear from you. Like I said, if you haven't said a thousand times that this is too hard, then you are not doing the right thing. <laughs> At least a thousand times, you know, this is too hard. I can't do this anymore. That means you're doing the right thing. And whether in heaven or in earth, the principle of domain is saying, like you've seen the angels who did not keep their domain in heaven or earth, kingdom principles are saying, because it's the same kingdom, kingdom of heaven manifesting on the earth. So it's the same as it is in heaven on earth. It's coming here. And, and we are the vehicle, the channels that can do it, or the engine that manifests the spiritual into the natural. So thank you, everyone. And if you led, you know, to give, <laughs> I always want to give opportunity to sow into God's kingdom. Go to the website, sow a seed in the God's kingdom to bless this ministry because we have work to do. We are translating those books, preparing. The only thing we are missing is emotional healing. I'm telling you. We are preparing that, those books or those manuals. So if Holy Spirit puts in your heart to be a partner with this ministry, this work, please do so. Just because I don't ask, I don't push, I don't manipulate, that doesn't mean, oh, Abraham doesn't need anything because he is in heaven. No, I am also still living on. We are planning to go to El Salvador and Guatemala in October, me Maybe God willing, Shardbrook and Armando, maybe a couple of other people from California area. And so we need funds to go there to train these pastors on the gospel of the kingdom. And we want to go to other places. So if Holy Spirit puts in your heart, go to the website, thekingdomnetwork.org, donate and choose where you want to donate, kingdom books, general funds, different things there. That will encourage me. That's how you encourage me to know that, okay, I'm standing with you, Abraham, on this. I'm receiving not just the word, but I want to be part of what God is doing, releasing. And it, it, will, it will be an encouragement to me. I'm telling you from my heart. So thank you. Um, somebody I just saw from Cameroon. My brother Emmanuel from Cameroon. Good to have you with us. Thank you. I see a couple of people behind you. Maybe your family. Welcome. Glad to, glad to have you with us. Hope you heard everything. Or you could hear. Okay. Um, Martin and Jefferson, please. Ah, um, greetings, kingdom greetings to everyone. Um this this message are this, this training today really triggered and, and and opened up. Well, I think Priscilla put it in a such a, such a beautiful way. 
actually, when you started, immediately when you started, started, I was actually on the road and I had to put the phone very close to my ear to hear, but I could feel, I could sense a difference. It was very evident. It was very, it was like something was literally coming from out of the phone into me and really just pressing into me. I really feel that God is 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 certainly letting us know. He has certainly stirred a new, or uh, open a new, a new portal or a new part in in the kingdom message. And and for us, not only are no longer to be hearing it, but I think the the cry of the spirit is saying to all of us that we must now manifest it. Scripture says that the kingdom is within you. All of us carry the kingdom of God. And I think we have allowed most of us, if not all of us, we have allowed the natural elements of our world, of our culture, of our different circumstances to manipulate, to seduce, and to break us into becoming and behaving like everybody else. And I really believe that what happened this morning and how God spoke it's a clear indication and a clear push that we must now move beyond what we have done. And it's going to be deliberate. You had mentioned, Abraham, that a lot of us thinking that the kingdom of God will like uh, like, 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 like we, when we used to watch Star Trek and the beam down something, we think that that's so no, we must, we have already, we have the kingdom of God and the only way it's going to manifest. It's unless we do it. And I'm I'm really, I tell you, you probably hit me more than I don't know about anybody else, Abraham, but I really felt that God was really screaming to me. Not in a not in an aggressive vex way, but saying that you now must implement and put all the, the structures and the different things in place to cause the kingdom to manifest in my immediate circle. And I really want to say that by God's grace, we will do that. This is what I have been searching for, for all of my life, for all of my life. And, and I know that the only, the only hope, the only, the only way men can be liberated, it's, it's, it's it's from this kingdom message. That has very little to do with me. So really want to thank you, Abraham, and I want to thank the saints. And I encourage all of us, let us now step out. Let us now use what we have in our hand and 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 and, and go forth and, and let the kingdom of God come forth in our different space. Amen. God bless everybody. Amen. Thanks, friend. Santi, good to have you all the way from Philippines. Jesse, I saw your name there, but I didn't see you from India. Jefferson, the last but not the least. Where's my brother Jefferson? And man, no of, one. man of few words. <laughs> no, man of a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it's nice being with you guys today. Um, as my brother used to say, Brother Abraham says, I'm a man of many questions. But today is not going to be questions. And today is going to be more of comments and appreciation for this word that just came in. And um, it's an eye opener and, and a reassuring of um, God's calling. Uh, because... Um, Recently, I was having this battle of um, a religious spirit that tells me that, you know, you have to preach the word. You know, I have to preach them. You have to tell them about, you have to go out to the streets and preach and all those kind of things. And it's not distracting me from the gifts God has given unto me. So listening to this message today has reminded me that I had something with me. It's like I had a tool, I held the tool, but I wasn't using it. and I was using another thing. Instead of using the tool God has given to me. So it's a very wonderful thing and it has really killed. I'm not saying preaching is bad, but it's not really a priority when it comes to the kingdom of God. It's about the influence you have that gives people opportunity for you to preach. I remember last year when I was working with a construction company, 
and I happened to work with a worker, an artisan, and you know, he spent his money without control. So I was just discussing and I was telling, he was telling me about the issue of his rent and I was asking him, does he save or does he invest and all those kind of things? He said no. And I didn't know I was giving him a lecture. And before I knew it, he went to look for a notebook to listen to what I would have to say. I was surprised. I was like, this is just a small thing. But I didn't know it was something big. It was an influence because um, he wanted to learn how to live productively in life. And um, and I realized so much that um, what we do speaks so much. And it's all about bringing solutions and it's all about expressing the love of God in everything we do. So um, thank you very much, Brother Abraham, for today's message. And it's an eye-opener. And trust me, from today, we are taking things practically. And I want to admonish us and say, um, this is also an influence. The people around us in this ecclesia is also an influence. We have brothers and sisters who need our help and who need our support. We can support one another. This is also a system. So thank you very much, everyone. God bless. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jefferson. Just raise your hands and Father, thank you for one more time. Father, thank you for this Father, word. Thank you for this word. Thank it's you not for this my word. word. My ability. Lord, not God, nothing God, of mine. God. It's all his. Thank you, Unless the grace thank of God worked, nothing the grace of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy thank Spirit. You, Jesus. Thank, thank you, seven thank spirits you, of God. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you for what you did today. Thank you for release. Thank you. What thank you, you Lord. To release, thank Father. You. Thank you. And we catch it, we grab it. Thank you, Father. And so please, yeah. so, so, so it start today. I knew that now. Yes. Be able to see what you have heard. In weeks' time, we will be coming and presenting what you have made your domain. What is it? So start working on it today. So please don't lose it. You cannot do two hundred things. You cannot do 10 things, just share one thing that we need to focus for the next three to five years. That's why you're going to pay undivided attention, focus. So you're going to give that and bring it to the Father as a worship. That's why we don't sing many songs here. We don't need to make Jesus happy. He's always happy. We don't need to wake him up. He doesn't sleep. He's not a bow demon spirit in the old covenant. He is with us. He is in us. Never leaves us, nor forsake us. Always with us. But we need to do. He is waiting for us. So thank you, everyone, for receiving. Thank you for all the feedback, comments. Love you all. Appreciate you. And uh, see you next week. Amen. Bye-bye. Good night. Good morning. Good evening. To everybody. Thank you so much. You. Bye, everyone. Uh, Bless week in advance. Blessing. Bye.